Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, listen, I'm giving y'all a video that has been highly requested. Like, yo, when I say highly requested, I mean since like over a year ago, before I even started really doing YouTube. So today I'm going to be doing like a story times, like about my experience as an EOP student at U Albany. I'm wearing my Albany shirt, but listen, y'all don't even know what I went through last summer. I'm class of 2023, so I was in EOP summer 2019, last summer. I've been wanting to do this video for so long, but like now, it's been literally a year since I've been in the EOP program. Like just now, recently, not recently, but like you know, like the past two days or whatever, cause today's July 2nd, July 1st, I'm bugging, today's July 1st. This is the second day that I'm getting EOP Snapchat memories, and I'm getting flashbacks, and like, I just need y'all to know what I went through last summer. Now, before I go start this video, this video video is in no way shape or form to to bring down the EOP program or whatever cuz I am gonna be talking about some negative experiences but that's not the only thing I'm talking about I'm gonna be talking about my whole experience as an EOP student and it's not just negative things like EOP comes with a lot a lot of benefits so I just had to make that disclaimer cuz I am gonna be talking about some things that people might be like but that doesn't mean I don't like being an EOP student. At the time, I might not have, but we gonna get into that, all right? So before we get started, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into this video. So, first thing I'm gonna talk about, I don't know where to start, like, how do I even, I don't even know. All right, first thing I'm gonna talk about is EOP summer, right? So boom, going into this program, I knew nothing about what EOP was. All I know is that it's an education opportunity program, meaning like, it's basically for people with low income families and low grades. When people hear EOP, they automatically think like you're broke and you're dumb. Let me talk about that real quick because I'm not either okay I'm not broke or dumb now I'm not saying I'm rich I'm not saying like I got mad money but I'm not broke where I have zero dollars in my account like you know what I mean boom I don't come from a family that has it like that so that's that's like low income whatever right most EOP students are not dumb that's one. Two, my grades were, were phenomenal, all right? All throughout high school, my grades were amazing. Like, like, I was like top 10 in my school. I had like a 93, 94 average, and it got brought down. It could have been a 96, which you know, I was slack in junior year. But that's still good. That's still higher than average. So I just had to put that out there, because everybody, every time somebody thinks of EOP, y'all think about broke and dumb. Like, no. First of all, a lot of EOP students are mad smart. It's just some of them, they just be slacking. That don't mean they dumb, though. Now, let's get into this. Let's get into the experience so like I was saying going into the EOP program I didn't know nothing about what it was I don't know what the some the five-week program was I don't know anything about anything all I know is that they're helping me with my tuition I have to go to a five-week program that's all I knew right so this is five-week program that we have to attend in order to be an EOP student or whatever and it's like the whole month of July like you go like we I went from like June 30th to like beginning of August even though I left like a little bit early cuz I had to go to London and I've been talked to the director of the program like months before I even got accepted so I didn't stay to the end of the program I left like four days early and I think I'm the only student that has like almost ever done that and I'm sorry if I'm talking fast because I have a lot to say and I don't want this video to be super super long yeah so the five-week program is basically you take three classes a day English math well not English but you know like an English class a math class and what's those called like it's like an EOP class with your with your counselor is what you and I there we go you and I every freshman takes that it's like a freshman seminar class but EOP students like they started it in the summer so that when the full semester started we only had to take you and I like once every two weeks so we only have that class twice a month during like the full semester but okay so that's like pretty much the background or whatever of what the five-week program is now I'm gonna tell you about the rules that we had to follow so boom we get there we chilling they talking to our parents we exploring the campus everything is all cool I'm like all right like I'm gonna meet new people da 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 boom as soon as our parents go home this is when everything started going downhill they started to break down the rules of what we have to comply with for the rest of the summer now wait, wait first of all let's talk Talk about that we just graduated I literally had to go to this EOP program three four days after my graduation whereas every other senior were on senior vacation like you know like graduation parties the whole summer they had their whole summer to themselves before they started college every EOP student never had that like we never had to have a summer before college we was in EOP we was in EOP where every other freshman or incoming freshman was out having mad fun but it was worth it because we was definitely prepared for college but anyways it's telling us the rules so I'm gonna just like list a couple of the rules I can't even remember all of them because it was OD and it's been literally a year since then. So boom, some of the rules is like girls can't wear shorts, like short shorts. And if the shorts come, you know, like when you have to like 
stand up straight and if your shorts are lower than your um, fingertips if your shorts are shorter than your fingertips basically you can't wear them basically can't wear any shorts because what girl is really wearing knee length shorts nobody the only knee length shorts that girls wear is biker shorts and guess what couldn't wear those either couldn't wear leggings we couldn't wear like bodycon dresses bodycon skirts we couldn't basically wear like anything revealing no spaghetti strap nothing with your boobs out nothing with cleavage nothing with like if it's not two fingers or wider i think you couldn't wear it something like that i don't know most people just wore um short sleeve shirts because listen if you was to wear something that wasn't according to the rules, you would get written up. And we're gonna get into that. So that's one of the rules. It's basically like dress code. Um, we had classes mad early every morning, so we had to wake up. Well, we had to be outside of our dorms like 7 a.m. every single day. Monday through Friday, I think. Yeah, Saturday and Sunday. Sometimes, some weekends, like two weekends out of the five weeks we were there, we were able to go home. But the other weekends, they had like activities planned for us, but we, we wouldn't have to be outside till like 10 a.m. And those were the days that we finally get to catch up on sleep. Because let me tell y'all, we had three classes a day and they would violate with the homework. Like, why am I getting three essays every single day? I don't know. In the summer, after I just graduated, like, damn. But yeah, so we had math homework every single day, so we would be up mad late finishing our homework. And they gave us library hours throughout the day. Well, like, after dinner, we had library hours, but that was not enough time. They gave us two hours to do our homework and we still didn't finish on time. That's how much homework we had. Like, we literally had assigned library hours. Nine times out of ten, everybody had to still go back to their dorms, finish their homework. Me and my roommate, personally, we did not go to sleep until, like, after 2 a.m. every single day. Some days would be 4 a.m. And we have to be outside at 7, meaning we didn't get any sleep. Now, y'all see how it's mad work, da 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 the times, right? We would be dumb tired, like, dumb tired. If you was not tired, then you was on crack because I used to literally be falling asleep in class. And let me get into that. If you, if they catch you falling asleep in class, when I say they, it's like essays. They're like assistants for like, not in charge of you, but you know, like, that's like if you go to a sleepaway camp, that's like your counselor, something like that. So yeah, every like essay was assigned to like a certain floor in our dorms. We stayed on Dutch Quad in Albany. The girls was in Bleecker and Van Cortland and the guys was in Tembroic. So it was like, yeah. So the essays would write us up if they, if we was breaking any of the rules, but specifically if we was like sleeping in class, if you even like nodded your head off or something like that, you would get written up. You would get written up for any little, thing like but it was just so hard to stay awake during certain things like especially during the lectures we had lectures like every single day the lecture wasn't even included like with our three classes it was like our three classes lunch then a lecture every day it's the same schedule every single day but it, it was different lectures like some of them was interesting some of them was od boring but you know they were all informational you know like and one thing i'm gonna say before we even like end this topic when you're in the eop program and you're like in these lectures you're probably mad tired you're bored but all of those lectures dead came in clutch throughout the school year because UOP students knew where everything was at. We knew the campus. We knew who to go to for what. We knew who was the head of this department. Da, 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 da. Like they, we knew everything that freshmen didn't. We knew literally everything, and we probably knew a lot more than even regular sophomores didn't. But yeah, so that's what I'm gonna say about that. Anyways, the lectures was mad long. They felt like forever, and it was just something about the LC that like just made me so tired. And the thing was, people would dead like try to like hide their faces so they can go to sleep without being caught. Like that's how bad it was. We were so tired. <sighs> I'm gonna put my hair right here. If you had long hair, you was you was lucky because I would be like this and I'll put my head down or like I'll, I'll pretend that I'm writing in my book and just pretend that I'm sleeping, but you can't see because of my hair, especially if I'm sitting at the end of the room. Yeah, I used to be swindling. Like I used to be so tired. Like and me, I love sleep. Like sometimes, you know, I get caught. I probably got written up that whole summer like twice, but <laughs> I got even bigger trouble than just a writer. We're gonna get into that. And this might be a lengthy video. I'm not even gonna lie, this might be a lengthy video. Oh well. So we would get write-ups, right? And for the write-ups, like every day the director would tell us like we had to write like a two-page paper per writer. And you could get up to like however many write-ups in a day. Cause let's just say you could fall you fell asleep during your math class, right? Whatever essay was in that class caught you when they wrote you up, you could have get written up for that. You could have get written up for talking in the library, you could have get written up for talking when they was trying to announce something and every Everybody was being quiet like you could have got so many write-ups in one day and at the end of every single day each write-up was like a two-page or four-page essay and it wasn't like a hard essay like do research and stuff but it was like an essay on like why do you want to be here or what can you do to improve yourself or something for the next time you get written up it would be like easy essays but it's just like so dumb i'm writing a three-page essay on why i was talking it was stuff like that and like obviously like they do that so you don't want to write the essay so you don't get written up so you follow the rules smart but sometimes the essays would be OD and they would just write people up for no reason. Like you could literally not be talking and you'll be like, you'll tell somebody like, excuse me. And they'd be like, you're talking, write up. Like what? But 
whatever yo when i tell y'all like if you're one minute late right up one minute it could be 30 seconds like they don't care if you're not outside by the time it hits like seven o'clock or whatever time they tell you to be outside you're gonna get ran up it's no point of even arguing or like trying to go back and forth like no i was here on time don't do it because it's their word over yours. You're going to get ran up. You're still going to write the essay. And oh yeah, another rule. We couldn't talk to anybody outside of the EOP program. Meaning like, you know how like when you're incoming freshman, you know, you have orientation or whatever. EOP didn't have orientation. That like the five week was our orientation. Regular admission students, they had like weekend orientation. You know, they was there for like two days or whatever. When they would come, unless you can't talk to them. And if you talk to them, that's a write up. Like if it, if it wasn't an EOP student, you can't talk to them. You can't even say hi, bye. Nothing at all unless you want to get a write-up and I'm pretty sure you don't because who's writing a four-page essay on top of the homework that you already have Yeah, so in the beginning of the EOP program for my year I'm going to my my year the essays were very strict very harsh like to me Personally, I know like all of the essays now like obviously once you become a student Like obviously like once you go to the school like during the fall and spring semester You're gonna be seeing like essays around campus like hey, what's up? Like, you know, you know them from the EOP summer So they're not like, you know, they're not somebody to be like, oh my gosh They're not like a professor or something. They're regular students but in the EOP program you don't know anybody so they're just like there's somebody that has authority over you during those five weeks I'm gonna just say like what I how I felt before I knew any of them because before I even got to know any of them they were all mad mean like it was probably like one or two of them that was like all right they cool or like I didn't talk to it was like a good four of them that I was just like yo like y'all really riding right now like y'all really on me right now not even just me but everybody and it would just be to a point where i'd be like yo you're really like odin like you're a fiend it's like they was being like rude and had attitudes on purpose they didn't even know what's from a hole in the wall they didn't know none of us it was like 250 i don't know how much it was they was wild rude not even gonna lie they was wild rude i'm not even gonna sugarcoat that and if you're watching this and you was an essay maybe you weren't but your friend was i don't know but there was a lot of essays at first like the first week they was odin and like we're adults too like we're 18 you're not gonna just sit here and talk to me however you want i don't care who you are i don't care if you're who i don't i don't care who you are you're not gonna sit here and disrespect me now if you're telling me like i have to do this and I have to do that you know i have to listen to you but don't disrespect me there's no reason for you to have an attitude for no reason and that's what i didn't like you know we have certain times in the day where we can just like vent to our um counselors because each eop student has a, a eop counselor and you know sometimes when we have um our you and i class we would just vent to our um counselors and just like tell them yo like this essay was wildin this one was od and like we would just tell them mass stuff the first week was od and then after we started voicing our opinions like the students then they started like easing up then they started becoming cool then it was like they started like you know their attitude wasn't there anymore and we was all like oh i and it wasn't all of them it wasn't all of them but it was it was a lot of them still to this day it's just like who are you anyways next <laughs> another big thing that they never ever 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 let us forget was you are not a student you are not a student here yet you do not attend university at albany you do not go here yet you are not a student here yet they never let us forget that they said it every single day and the thing is when you're an eop student and before you complete the five-week programs you're not you're not a student there if you like break any of the rules and they like send you home like you're no longer a student there like you're kicked out of school basically so so technically that whole time we were there we wasn't even students at university at Albany yet that was OD like to know that you don't even attend this university and then it's like let's just say after a week experiencing being an EOP student and you don't like it you don't like how the school is or you don't like what they're doing you don't want to go through this it's not even like all right I'm not gonna go here anymore let me see what other school I got accepted to because everything is already done decision day is done most schools already like closed off their admissions like you know what I mean most schools is already like done accepting students so you you're left with no choice but to either go to a community college or stay at you Albany you're, you're left with no choice like you have to complete this five-week program or else you don't have a college to go to in the fall okay I'm very big on first impressions like very big and my first impressions from everybody that was in charge like the RD ARDs essays all of them was like they're all mean they're all rude they all have attitudes for no reason and I get it now looking back it's like okay I understand why they were the way they were like they have to be strict and firm because if they not like that everybody's gonna walk all over them while I was like experiencing this i was very like yo they really odian like why are they like this it was just really shocking to go from having so much freedom well, me personally i have a lot of freedom at home to come to a five-week program and it's just like oh you can't do nothing that you want and it's just like what 
Like we couldn't have our phones outside of our dorms. We was only able to be on our phones when we got back from our dorms at night. Was meaning we was never on our phones. It's a lot of pressure and a lot of people like they hear all of this and it's just like, oh, it's not that bad. But like being put in that situation, it's very hard. It's very hard. And you don't want to be like known as the person that like always breaking the rules or whatever, getting mad, write-ups. Cause so you're probably going to get being sent home. Being sent home means you cannot come to the school. Like there's no coming, oh, I'll see y'all in the fall. No, it's none of that. You can't even reapply through regular admission. You can't even do that. It's either you finish the five weeks or you don't go there at all. And there actually were a lot of people that got sent home. There's going to be a lot of people that get either kicked out, they want to go home, they go home by themselves, something happens. Okay, so now let's talk about my year and what my class went through. There was a time where almost like every single day, my class was like really loud at lunch. Not just at lunch, you know, lunch and dinner. It was like all the time. We were always loud. Like I feel like it was like for a whole week, I guess. But you know, when you're talking with your friends and stuff, you're not realizing how loud you are. But imagine how many people is in the, the dining hall. It's mad heads. They was like, if you continue to be mad loud, then you know we're gonna have to like, give y'all a sanction, give y'all punishment, whatever. The week goes on, we're still being mad loud at every meal. But the thing is, nobody's doing it on purpose. Who's whispering at lunch and at dinner? You know, it's like I'm not about to whisper. And I'm not yelling. But they needed to realize like it was mad of us. A lot of voices, 200 and I forgot how many people it was. 200, let's say 200, right? I think it was less than, I don't know. 200 voices all at once. You think it's gonna be quiet in the dining hall? No, it's not. It's not gonna be quiet, it's mad of us. And they was tired of it. So basically what they had us do, I think it was for two or three days. I'm not even sure. Now I think it was two, but somebody like messed it up so it like got accepted to, to three. We had to be silent, meaning no talking at all whatsoever. During lunch, breakfast, dinner, when you're lining up outside. That's the thing, we had to line up to get into the dining hall. Like two straight lines. Like, what is that? You couldn't talk on the line. You couldn't talk for any little thing. Only time you were able to talk was either in your dorm, you and your roommate, just you and your roommate, or you and your suite mates. That's it. That's that's like three people that you could talk to for three whole days. Or the only time you could talk is either if, you know, you have to use the bathroom, you have to ask. And the, it was one more time. Oh, yeah. If um if you're in class, you know, if you have a question, you have to ask your professor, um, you know, if you're having trouble with a math problem or something. That's the only time you could talk. Other than that, you can't talk. There was no socializing for three days. And it was just it was just crazy because, like, you know, it was mad funny people. If somebody, like, make a little joke or do something stupid, your initial response is to laugh. Things are always ten times funnier when it's not supposed to be funny or when you're not supposed to laugh. And you just can't help it. Like, should be mad funny. But there was a lot of things that they did for us. You know, like, we had, like, ice cream socials. We had like parties like when I say parties, I don't that's another thing Let's get into these parties that they threw for us We had two parties one in like the beginning and one at like the end I missed the end cuz you know, like I said, I went to London So I wasn't there. It was like a performance thing like everybody performed The only thing about the party was that you can't touch nobody dub no touching Let's say like you touch someone on the shoulder and they feel like you're caressing them in the wrong way And they go tell somebody the person that touched you is gonna get sent home they're kicked out of college because they touched you. Let's not even get into that. Just know at the parties, we couldn't touch anybody. So it was just a lot of us just singing. And the thing is, it's mad of us. So like, we might be like bumping into each other and stuff. And they really had essays standing on top of tables, making sure that we wasn't touching anybody with their flash on. Like, they was holding it. Like, one thing about Albany EOP, they were strict about their rules. Like, it was no like, okay, this is a rule. No, it was, this is a rule and you're gonna listen to it. Yeah, we went through a lot, but I can definitely say it was worth it. I have mad, like, regular admission friends. They would ask me mad questions. Like, yo, Michael, where's that thing? Or who's that person? That, like, they would come to the EOP students asking us for everything. And that, that experience really just made me want to mature. Like, I'm gonna sum it up. I almost got kicked out of college twice. And when I say get kicked out, I almost got sent home. Meaning, if I got sent home, I got kicked out. But it happened twice. First time, I got caught stealing from Walmart. Stealing. It wasn't even stealing. I was at self-checkout. And when I was ringing up my stuff, whatever, certain things didn't ring up, but it, I wasn't like making sure every single thing was being ringed up. It was very much like, oh, I didn't care. I really had, it was like a very like, I don't care type of attitude, whatever. And this is not something I'm ashamed to say. So if you're watching this, you're like, oh, Michael was stealing. Suck my dick. Because half of y'all dead be stealing. Y'all be proud about it. After that experience, I never went through self checkout again. That's one. Two, I have stolen before. I'm not even gonna lie. During that time, like when I was in EOP, I wasn't like intentionally stealing, but I have intentionally stole before, like prior to that experience. And after that experience, it definitely taught me, like, I would never do that again. I'm not doing none of that because that experience really taught me OD. Like, I almost got kicked out of college for something so little. Like, it was like hair conditioner and stuff like that that I didn't ring up. And it wasn't like I did it on purpose, but I didn't care either. You know, it wasn't like I was being extra careful, like, let me scan this, let me, you know, I wasn't being careful. I was just, I was sitting in that office crying my eyes out. Cause I'm really sitting here thinking like, what school am I gonna attend in 
the fall if I get kicked out. I, I was really thinking to myself, like, what school am I going to? UA was my top choice. My top choice. Like, where was I gonna go? You tell me, where was I gonna go? Nowhere. I was gonna go to UA. So I'm sitting there crying. I'm over here like, yo, like, over something so small. And then at the moment, I'm like, can I just pay for the stuff that I didn't ring up? Like, it's not like I didn't have the money. It was just, you know, like, I was being mad careless. Mad, stupid, mad careless. Like, after that, I never went through self-checkout ever again. Because it was just, I didn't want to even go through that. But yeah, so I'm over here pleading my case to the ARD, the RD, the director of the EOP program. I'm sitting here crying. Imagine getting kicked out of your top choice. Sitting here, like, this is making me emotional. Like, and I'm not I'm not ashamed to say this I'm, I'm gonna be very truthful in this in this video don't steal like don't do it even if it's accidental make sure when you're doing self-checkout you better double check that receipt so yeah that was the first reason of why I almost got kicked out of school second reason remember how I was saying how like the RD and the ARD and all the essays were really like ODN it was like really mean and stuff so on the you 2023 page somebody posted like oh like free EOP students you know they're going through hell cuz we was all complaining UA page saying like free EOP students da, 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 like and I have friends personally that commented and tagged me because they knew I was an EOP student and it was like oh free Micah and I commented like yo free me a simple joke not only was it that but it was something else it was something like oh yeah somebody posted a picture of the RD or whatever and was like this is something like bad about him or whatever I commented under it I don't remember what I said I don't but I know it wasn't good it was something like yo like he be ODing like you know he be doing too much why he liked something like that because he used to be OD. I'm sorry, Steven, if you're watching this, but yo, but we cool, we cool, we cool. So anyways, yeah, so I commented something like that. Tell me why the next day we go into the lecture, the lecture as we always do. Every single day we go into the lecture after lunch or whatever. The first thing we see on a big screen is all the posts from that Instagram post. Screenshots of all the posts. So Yo, this is still like a dream. Like, oh my gosh. They have everybody's ad, everybody who commented, who said what. And of course, my name was there. And then my battery's dying. Whatever. So my name was there, and they like had screenshots of everything that I was saying. And I had like three comments up there, I think. It was like three comments. Most of the people that was up there only commented once. My name was up there three times. That's mad embarrassing. In a, in a room full of mad people, like, damn. Everybody, I know everyone's probably looking like, damn, like, damn, Micah, damn, Micah. Because I know after that, everybody was just like, you know, give you that eye, like, it's so fun in games when you're doing it, you know, it's like in the moment thing, it's like, oh, da-da-da, kiki, whatever, but then, like, so, like somebody screenshotted it and sent it to the director, and they put it on the big screen in front of the whole EOP program, and my name was up there the most times, like, and I actually did feel OD bad, because they gave us a speech, da-da-da-da, you know, I didn't, I didn't see nothing of it when I was doing it, but looking back, it's just like, damn, like, that's one thing I learned. Social media, every anything you post on social media can always come back to bite you. Like, one screenshot and it's over. Yeah, so that was the second reason why I almost got kicked out because, you know, I'm sitting here talking about the RD and I'm over here like, free me. After I already got in trouble from stealing from Walmart and I was on sanction from that. I was isolated from everybody, me and the other girls that, that got in trouble. But I didn't care. I was taking any type of punishment. I don't care if I could have told somebody for the rest of the five weeks. I was taking it because anything would have been better than getting sent home and not having a college to attend to in the fall you know so people was like damn you can't talk for two to three days like oh my gosh but to me i was like that's nothing it's worth it it's better than the alternative so i was i was gonna take any punishment i don't care if they made me clean the back of the garbage truck like i don't care what they would have made me do i was gonna do it the thing was i got in trouble for the first thing and then i'm still over here like posting stuff you know so it was just a bad look like why are you posting all this stuff you just got in trouble and you're still sitting here free me talking about the rd and stuff so you know like the director and stuff they, they looking at me like like why are you doing this but right after they posted those slides i went up to um the rd and i apologized like i literally instantly saw where i was wrong i was like nah that's od like and i even dm'd the, the albany 2023 page and i was like listen like take this down like we just got in trouble like the whole eop class just got in trouble like just take the whole post down delete everything like but yeah that was my experience of almost getting kicked out of college twice but then again everything happens for a reason you live and you learn and i'm not scared i'm not shy i'm not trying to hold anything back like i'm not scared to tell y'all what i went through so that this is just me telling my experience as an eop student this video will be a whole three hours long if i sat here and tell you every little thing if there's anything that you learned from this video is that i am very grateful to be an eop student because so many people apply to be eop student because everybody wants the perks of what it is to be eop student because we get like book money we get a lot of stuff everybody wants that but so yeah i'm proud to be a UP student. I don't care. Just don't call me dumb and broke. I don't care if you call me broke because I don't care. Don't call me dumb. Don't call me dumb, baby. I'm very smart. All A's.
okay all A's over here but yeah I'm not ashamed to show y'all my story because I am a very humble person like I'm very like honest I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you guys I'm not my camera literally died as soon as I was doing my my closing but it's alright because the video's over so yeah I'll see you guys in my next video bye